I'm using Adobe's incredible new AI inside of Photoshop to see if I can mess with some Disney photos. Now sometimes you have to be a little more vague on what you're asking it, so we're just gonna see if we can do something simple. Add fireworks. So a shot of Space Mountain that would not have fireworks behind it because of where this is placed, but can it figure out how to add fireworks? It's a very, very simple background. It's just black. Okay, I like that a lot. We've got a couple of options here, one, two, and three. I don't like three so much. I think two is the best option, but they are a little big. Option one might be the most realistic that we can see. Some of the fill just a little bit mm, here might add in a little bit more realism to match some of the lighting. It's not bad. Now we can go for something a lot crazier. Let's zoom in and grab here and go all the way up. Grab that area right there and say, add in rocket launch. Oh no. Well, it technically listened, but it really wants that rocket to be really close. So let's try something a little different and say, Let's take Space Mountain, add in Starry Night Sky. Generate. This image was taken on a very, very cloudy, dark night with nothing in the sky, as you can see. It was borderline just black. So if we can add a really cool spacey background for this, just like that. That is so cool. We got option one, option two, option three. I like option one the best because to me it looks the most realistic. Option two, you can see a very clear cutoff. And option three, while it looks amazing, you again can see that cutoff. So I'm gonna stick it with option one. Very cool. Our next image, we got Spaceship Earth. Same thing, a pretty simple sky. You can kind of see a pattern here of being able to change the sky, but that's what this AI is for. Let's fill the sky with clouds, something simple. Add in some clouds, add a little bit of texture and depth to one of your photos. Can it figure out clouds? I think it can. One thing that this AI has been really good at is figuring out lighting sources. So it really does match that lighting pretty good when it comes to a cloud. Another option there. Nothing mind blowing. I like it. That one actually added a tree. So it did, again, helps that depth. I'll stick with that one. You know, if you had a no sky, that sky but I am interested to see this. You can also use the AI to expand out photos. So if I go here and expand this out, will it be able to figure out the rest of Spaceship Earth? Does it know that that is a ball or is it just gonna kind of smear it across? There's enough information to kind of show it that it is a round object, but I don't know that it'll necessarily figure it out. Okay, I'm actually really impressed with what it figured out. There is a little bit of smearing here, but I mean, for an AI to do it that fast, there's option one. Option two actually did a better job. And option three, a little bit of weird smearing, but it did figure it out. So just like that, we built from there, from here, added some clouds, and then expanded the entire horizon to be able to fill this. And to be honest, nobody's gonna see that. No one's gonna notice. Now I've got a weird one at Wilderness Lodge. We've got this water here and we're at Wilderness Lodge. So I wanna add and see if it can figure it out. Bear sitting in water. Now this is not an easy thing I'm asking it to do. This is telling the AI to completely come up with an animal as well as sticking it in a very specific environment with a lighting source that I gave it from this image. So we'll have to see how well this one works out. Okay, not bad. It didn't, it's somewhat in the water. Somewhat in the water. It really just kind of gave it wet fur, but it did try its best. So I appreciate that. Not the best photo in the world, not the worst photo in the world, but it got some dumb stuff done. Here at Galaxy's Edge, there's so many ways that you could kind of use the things that we know about the Adobe AI so far to your advantage. So I'm gonna go right in here, grab this space and say, alien planet. I mean, that's a given, how easy could that be? When you use a, a photo from 
Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, just adding in any alien plant, see if you can kind of figure it out with the sky and the spacing. And the lighting is going to be hard to match up just because it is at night. Ooh, very, very pink planet. That one's not bad. Uh, no, I'm going to say that one was kind of a fail. Let's try giving it more sky and saying adding night sky. So we're going to give it a night sky one instead. It's already a night sky, so it's really just trying to match that. I don't know if it's going to add stars or if it's just going to kind of make the sky darker. I have... Hmm. This is definitely hit or miss. It added some stars, but again, not really that good. Add in planet. Let's see if adding in a planet and giving that space, I don't know if it would necessarily fill the whole space. That usually tries to, so it might have trouble looking out for the spaceship, but we'll see if it uses its space correctly. Okay, not the best, not the worst. I like that it added a couple planets, actually. It definitely found us planets really fast. Matching with the sky is not the best, but that's okay. So of these three planet options, I think I liked option three the best. Hmm, I like that one too. If we take that fill down even farther, you can find a sweet spot to kind of allow that in. And then if you go in yourself and add in a little bit of Gaussian blur, just a little bit. Hmm. You can find the sweet spot and kind of add it to your sky just right, as well as taking down just some of that opacity. You can see where the potential is.